Thank you, everyone. This is an exciting opportunity, and it's wonderful to follow Irene Smith, who is a uh, famous supporter of Mupo Feast. So, appreciate the talk. Thank you. It begins chapter one. Or did it start with the preface? Let's just say this story begins with two people who fall in love and produce a child. So many stories begin just like this. Boy meets girl, girl loves boy, boy leaves girl. And so that is my beginning. My preface is my biological father showing up at the hospital hours after I was born to ask whether or not he had produced a son or a daughter. Well, luckily for me, I had a really, really smart mother. She wised up quickly, kicked him to the curb, and she raised this girl all by herself. I was a typical child, curious, wide-eyed, enchanted. I was shy, quiet, reserved, afraid of everything. Thunder, lightning, the dark, and the boogeyman. Whoever he may have been, I was afraid of him. I had never seen a picture of him, but I imagined that he was terribly large, huge teeth, and definitely did not like children. I avoided him at all costs, and avoiding him became the theme of my life, and I hadn't even realized it. I just wasn't aware that I was avoiding confronting the boogeyman. Now, I had no proof that he even existed. Any, I had never met anyone that had witnessed him or his wrath, but he was a threat. He was behind a lot of possibilities. Don't go outside at night, because the boogeyman's going to get you. Get me? Get me? What does that mean? Where's he going to take me? What's he going to do to me? Well, I didn't know what he was going to do. I didn't want to find out. So I stayed away from the boogeyman. By the way, he doesn't exist. To get to the next thing, it helps to know where you came from. They say you will repeat your parents' mistakes. And it's true, and I did. Don't repeat the same mistakes twice. Learn from them and move on. I had a boyfriend in high school. We were in love. We were going to get married and have a family. That lasted, oh, eight long years made it through college. It probably had something to do with the boogeyman. Maybe he was the boogeyman. In any case, that young love didn't last forever. But you already knew that. It led me to meet my first husband. One door closes and another door opens. He was a wonderful human being, full of love, laughter, very, very kind heart. We were madly in love, and we had made plans to raise a family and become an upper middle class family with 2.5 kids and a Volvo. We'd spend our summer vacations at the shore just as we had done with our parents 25 years earlier. We would cook out with friends, walk the dogs, and have dinner parties while everyone brought a bottle of wine and a casserole. Well, we had plans. Unfortunately, for one reason or another, our plans did not come to fruition. Life happened. We kept growing and growing and growing apart. It took about four years before we realized we weren't meant to be, meant to be husband and wife. We were different people. It sounds like it ended peacefully, and for the most part it did, but let's be realistic. No relationship that comes to an end ends on a good note. So the years have taught me, and so did my mother, not to have regret. I don't regret spending four years with my husband. I don't regret getting married at the age of 26, because when one door closes, another door opens. So it's important to remember to take time for yourself. 
because it's at this time that I truly looked inside of myself to find out what Melissa wanted. Who did I want to be? How did I want to others to see me? How did I want to represent myself? Not as someone's wife, or someone's daughter, or someone's girlfriend. Those positions did not define me. What kind of mark was I going to leave on the world? At that time, I discovered my true passion of helping others. It was always there. I was just channeling the energy in the wrong places. I was truly spinning my wheels. At that point, I found Movable Feast. Little did I know what the future had in store. They needed someone to volunteer for a special event, and I needed to find my soul. I needed to find out who Melissa was, where she was going. Of course, it was a period of trial and error, and I'm sure many, many of you have been there. Bad haircuts, horrible clothes, ugly shoes. I tried yoga. That helped. I picked up running again. I joined the community association with this big plan of meeting a very interesting man and falling madly in love all over again. Hmm. Have you ever attended one of your neighborhood community association <laughs> meetings? You're aware. It's a bunch of disgruntled neighbors pulled together in a room, complaining about the guy who lives down the street with the commercial vehicle parked on the corner that's just an eyesore that no one wants to look at anymore. Oh, those people around the way, they just leave their trash can out for days. Oh, those other people, they put their trash can out the night before. And the rats, what are you gonna do about the rats? I mean, the conversations that these people have in these meetings about rats is unbelievable. Needless to say, I opened that door with expectation. Well, you can guess. I didn't meet the man of my dreams at this monthly meeting. Mm -mm. No, I didn't. I did, however, expand my participation by joining a greater umbrella and becoming the secretary of the district meeting. Because that's right, this girl's a joiner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like to say no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <sighs> Just breathe, Melissa. Just breathe. Now the lessons I was learning, I was learning them much faster. Much faster. Instead of people pleasing, I learned how to please myself. I learned how to make myself happy. Sometimes you have to sit alone in a quiet space and figure it all out. You just have to take some time for yourself. Then you have to take personal responsibility. Now doors are just swinging open. Full speed ahead, nothing's gonna stop me, I got this. I had learned acceptance. My mom had already taught me to be open to all people. You never know what kind of troubles other people are carrying around. I accept myself for who I am. I've learned to love myself. I accept others as they are and I have finally, finally realized that I cannot change another human being. They will be who they are, and so will I. So we must coexist, all of us, everyone. We must learn to sort out our differences. Hopefully we won't do this on Facebook. It became apparent to me that I should be doing more to contribute to society. If I was angry at the kids littering on the streets, what was I going to do about it? How was I going to remedy the situation? Was I going to complain like my disgruntled community association members? Where would that get me? The complaints don't spur change. I had to change my behavior to change another person's. Let's be clear. This doesn't mean you are going to get your desired outcome. However, 
If you change your reaction to the outside forces, those things that are entirely out of your control, things will be different. You will be different. There's also the fear factor. Remember that boogeyman that kept me from bad things, kept me safe at times? The fear factor kept me from moving forward, and it also kept me safe. Finding the balance between the two took me some time. By time, I mean approximately 35 years. I'm a late bloomer. I lost my first tooth when I was seven. I didn't develop as quickly as the other girls in my class, but I think I caught up. I'm not sure why it took me so long to catch on, but I did. I finally realized that life was mine to choose. I made the choice. I no longer lived inside of that box that my parents designed for me, that little safety net that they give you. It was well and good and nice, but I didn't have to live my life that way. So here I am, a college graduate, divorced 30-something, homeowner, had my own car, had my own bills, still trying to fit everything in that box. I needed elbow room. So the light bulb went off. I can eat dessert before dinner. I can eat dessert as my dinner. I don't have to make my bed. I don't have to iron the clothes and I don't have to hang wallpaper if I don't want to. So I stopped doing those things. I started a new phase, maybe not a good phase, but a phase. It opened the door for me. It allowed me to learn about the things I could do, the things I couldn't do, and the things I shouldn't do. I took more risks, I tried things that I would have never thought of trying before. So I say challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Do you hear me? Challenge yourself. I quit my job in corporate America. I found my place at Movable Feast. I oversee their special events. It's only been one year last month. Challenging? Yes. Rewarding? Very. The small organization started 25 years ago. We're about to anniversary this August. They started with seven local community members that wanted to help their friends, sick people in need. This was in the height of the AIDS crisis, and Movable Feast provides nutritious foods and other services in order to preserve the quality of life for people with HIV and AIDS and other life-threatening conditions. This came at a time when an HIV diagnosis was in effect a death sentence. Research and treatment were scarce. Resources were almost non-existent. There, there wasn't the internet. In 1989 in Baltimore, mortality attributable to HIV and AIDS was more than three times the national rate. Something had to be done. And the pioneers behind Movable Feast had a simple vision, feed people, fight disease, and foster hope. And that's what they did. That's what they still do. They rallied with some volunteers to prepare healthy meals and deliver them to homebound people with HIV and AIDS. They sat at the tables in the houses of friends at a time when people were feared and rejected because of the HIV and AIDS diagnosis. They fostered hope. This organization continues to raise awareness and continues to find innovative ways to carry out that vision. Challenging, yes. Rewarding, very. So I found my place, my place. I found something that I love doing every day. Luckily for me, it's at Movable Feast and I'm supported by wonderful staff, friends, and volunteers. If you're gonna leave your house and travel a distance to earn a day's wage, you might as well find something that you enjoy doing. I have a nonprofit job. I'll never be a millionaire. For me, it's not about the money. For me, it's about being great at little things. I even have a necklace that says so. It's something I want to remember each day. 
I may not win a Pulitzer, but I can give the universe, the community, my family, my very, very best. I can give them the best Melissa I know how to be. At the end of the day, if you try your hardest and you do your very best, it's really all that matters. Don't give up and don't make excuses. Set small, attainable goals. Accomplish them. Feel the accomplishment and be proud of yourself. Keep moving forward. So I told my friends that I was coming here today and that the subject was the next chapter. And my witty friend decided to make a joke about that and said, well, Melissa, you know, you had to meet the best thing in order to do the next thing. She was referring to my amazing husband, second time as a charm. She was right. It's not because of him that I'm doing the things that I do, but it makes what I'm doing all that much more valuable, all that much more rewarding, and so much better to share. I am just one person, one human being with a dream. I want to make the world a better place, and I believe I will start here. <laughs>